Today, let us together share the grace of God studying the Bible under the subject, Jerusalem Mother. Before we study about Jerusalem Mother, let me ask you a question. All the people of the world are curious about their future, thinking, what will happen to me in the future? Sometimes people ask astrologers or fortune tellers about their future. It's because they're curious. They're interested in their future. What will I become in the future? If I get a job in the government service, what position will I have? Or how much money will I make? They want to know about things like these, about their future. Aren't you curious about your future either? I believe all of you want to know your future. Then whom should we ask? Is it good to consult with a fortune teller? Or should we go to see mediums who read tarot cards? No one, nobody can give us a clear answer about our future. In the ancient days when Daniel lived, there was a King Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylonian Empire. And one day he had a dream. The king had a dream and woke up in the morning. He felt that he had a strange dream the night before, but he was not able to remember it. So he summoned all the astrologers, diviners, and magicians whom he would consult about managing the empire and asked them about his dream of the night before. What did he dream? This was his question. Because they had always predicted the future of the empire. If they had the power to foresee the future, it would be easy for them to tell the things of the past. That was why the king summoned them all. The king gathered them together and asked the diviners, I had a dream last night, but I forgot it. So, let me know about the dream. When the king asked them, were they able to give an answer? None of them could give an answer. They were the men who claimed to know the future, things that had not happened yet. But they were not able to know the things that happened in the past. It proved that their power to foresee the future was all fake and false. However, through the prophet Daniel, God let the king know not only the dream, but also its explanation, how amazing it was. Then whom should we ask about our future? Suppose that when you are wondering about your future, a strange person appears before you and says, you will become a great person. Although you're having a hard time at the present, you'll soon meet a great man, and after you meet him, you will live a totally different life that will be truly splendid. So, please be patient and endure your present sorrow, pain, loneliness, and suffering. You will become a child of the greatest man and then the strange person disappears. How will you feel like from that time on? Your heart will pound wildly, right? Won't you be filled with joy? Although someone offends you, you will just overlook it and be full of dream, hope, and expectation, thinking, this is nothing. Wait and see, I'll become a great person. Who said so? Who allowed us to know this kind of thing? God let us know such kind of things. Not a fortune teller, nor charmer, nor anyone else but God, who knows our future precisely. Let us know about the things 
that would happen in our future. He made known to us that we are children of the greatest one. We are not the beings living on the small planet Earth that is only 12,760 kilometers in diameter, but the heirs of the one who created the endless and measureless universe and manages the whole universe. So today, let us study why God told us to realize the existence of God the Mother. Let us take time to find out through the Bible. Let us take a look at Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but He will heal us. He has injured us, but He will bind up our wounds. After two days, He will revive us. On the third day, He will restore us, that we may live in His presence. Let us acknowledge whom? Whom should we acknowledge? It says, let us acknowledge God. Let us acknowledge Him, but how? Let us press on to acknowledge Him. We cannot know God if we do not make an effort. We should press on to know God. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. The prophet Hosea said that God wants us to acknowledge Him rather than giving many worship services to Him or carrying out lots of religious activities. Today, there are countless churches in this world. All churches insist on one and the same doctrine. They say, God is one. This is the common doctrine in all churches. However, what about the Church of God? We say definitely, God is not one. Isn't this strange? So we first need to understand the will of God. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 28. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. The Bible says that we are children of promise. Unfortunately, however, not everyone can be a child of promise. Then, who is the one who receives the promise from God like Isaac? First, let us study what the promise of God is. Let's take a look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. And this is what He promised us, even eternal life. Then the problem is how we can receive eternal life and who gives it to us. God showed this through the revelation of Apostle John. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. God created all things by whose will? God created all things, and by your will, they were created and have their being. Now let us think about life by relating it with everything that God created. We need to carefully consider how all creatures receive life. Whom do they receive this life from? We have to think about this. On our planet Earth that God created, there are birds flying in the sky, fish swimming in the sea, and animals running on the land. How do birds in the sky get life? From whom? They receive life from their mothers. What about fish in the sea? 
they too are given life through their mothers. What about animals running on the land? They too receive life from their mothers. What about human beings? Because all humans too are created by God, we are given life through our mothers. By whose will did God create everything? By God's will. It is said that everything was created and have their being by God's will. Then what is God's will in making everything receive life from their mothers? In the providence of God, a father cannot give birth to a child. Why is that? Everything is possible with the power of God, right? God is able to make fathers give life. But why did He make mothers give life? There is a certain will of God. Let us go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and find out the will of God who did so. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. The Bible testifies that God, who referred to Himself as us, created man. All the Bible versions written in Korean, French, German, English, and Spanish all read the same. The Bible clearly says that. But why do the churches teach people that one God created man? It is considerably wrong. Let's continue with verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him. Who did God create? Male and female, He created them. God created them just in the image of God, and man and woman were created. In whose image did God create the man? The man was the work of God, which was made just according to the male image of God. What about the female? Isn't it certain that God created the woman just according to the female image of God? What does all humankind call the male image of God? They call Him our Father in heaven. Then naturally, who is the female image of God to us? To make us know this, God created everything by His will. And when He gives life to everything, He gives it only through mothers. If we were not in our mother's womb, our eyes, ears, nose, mouth, fingers, and toes could not be created. Without a mother, we cannot exist. Why did God create all things like this? This is the most important thing that we should know. So the Bible says we should press on to know God. According to the book of Hebrew, things on this earth are a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. Just as there are human fathers and mothers on this earth, who must be in heaven? There must be God the Father and God the Mother. Nevertheless, many churches ignore the words of Genesis chapter 1, but insist that God is one. What makes them say so? It turns out that because of the words in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5, saying, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Aren't you bewildered when you read this verse? You may think, Oh, the Bible says God is one. But why do they say God is two? The next part is very important. One God in who? Father of all. That's right, Father is one. We do teach that God is two, but that Father is one. 
Of course, God the Father is one. There is no doubt. However, there is not only God the Father, but here is also God the Mother, whose image is female. Every word in the 66 books of the Bible is not recorded by the thoughts and wisdom of men, but by the Holy Spirit of God. So we have to believe it as it is. That is wisdom. There is distinction between the saying that God the Father of all is one, as written in Ephesians chapter 4, and the saying that God is one. If we are asked, Is God the Father one? We must answer, Amen. However, if we are asked, Is God one? We must reply, No. God the Father is one, of course, but God is two. God the Father and who? God the Mother truly exists. In order to let all human beings understand this truth through the 66 books of the Bible, God made two models. The two models are Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were the first human beings who were created in the image of God. As it's written, that God created everything by His will. There is the will of God in creating Adam and the will of God in creating Eve. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 14, and think about Adam first. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of whom? Who is the one to come? In the last part of Revelation chapter 22, it's written, Amen, come Lord Jesus. So the one to come refers to Jesus. Then Adam is the one representing Jesus. And Jesus is the father of our spirits. The reason God created Adam and made him exist was that he wanted to teach us about God the Father, the male image of God. Then why did God create Eve, the wife of Adam? Whom does she represent? Let us look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become what? The mother of all the living. What does the name Eve mean? Adam named his wife Eve containing the meaning living. In other words, it means that all human beings are given eternal life only through God the Mother. Isn't that right? In order to make known to us the existence of God the Father, God created Adam. And in order to make known to us the existence of God the Mother, God created Eve. So the Bible says that all things were created by the will of God. As for the time of the appearance of Eve, the Gospel of John explains it in detail. Let us look at John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the will of Him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that He has given me, but raise them up at the last day. What does He mean by saying, raise up at the last day? What will He give to those who are dead? It means that He will give them life. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to the earth as Almighty God. Then what is the reason He will give life at the last day, not at that time? This is a very important point in knowing God. In verse 40 it is written, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. It's said that He will raise up His people at the last day. 
He could have let all those who believed in Jesus have eternal life at that time and save them. But why did He say that He would save them at the last day? He did not say that He would save them at any time, but at the last day. He repeatedly said that. Let's go to verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up when? At the last day. Jesus repeatedly said that He would raise them up at the last day. He had said the same words a third time, I will raise him up at the last day. Three times are sure enough, but He said it again. Verse 54, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will what? Raise him up at the last day. Now the fourth time, He said that He would raise them up at the last day. He proclaimed such an important content at this time. If then, why is it that God's promise, eternal life, is related with the last day? Let's find the answer for the reason why God preordained this. Let us look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come. Who does the Lamb stand for? It is Jesus Christ. The Lamb is Jesus. But this is not the Jesus who came for the first time. It is because the next words say that this Jesus appears to have the wedding with His wife. This is not about Jesus' first coming. Then who is the one to come? Jesus who comes a second time. Through Adam and Eve, the existence of father and mother is explained. If Adam represents the one to come, that is the second coming Jesus, just as Eve, the wife of Adam, surely existed, the wife of the Lamb should exist too, right? She must exist. Let us find out who the wife is in verse 7. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come. Who was made ready? It is written that the wife has finally made herself ready. Verse 8. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Verse 9. Then the angel said to me, Right, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. The fact that there exists the bride of the Lamb is the true words of God. And the words, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb, are also the words of God. If then, you and I are those who are invited to the wedding of the Lamb, wouldn't you agree with that? According to the parable of the heavenly wedding banquet in Matthew chapter 22, there appear those who are invited and chosen. If then, who is the bride who appears here? We are those who are invited, and the Lamb is the second coming Jesus. Then who is the bride? In the light of the Trinity, Jesus Christ is our God the Father. Then what should we call the wife of God the Father? She is our eternal mother. About this fact, let us look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, and see what revelation God showed to Apostle John. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. What did the angel show him? He showed him the holy city Jerusalem. What is God's will in showing this Jerusalem? From now on, let us find the answer about this. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 26. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. At this, what relationship do we have with Jerusalem? It said, she is our mother. All the Bibles around the world have the same records. It's written, 
but the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. Now, do we have God the mother or not? We surely have our mother. Let's look at verse 27 too. For it is written, Be glad, O barren woman, who bears no children. Break forth and cry aloud, you who have no labor pains. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are what? Are children of eternal life like Isaac. Like Isaac, we are children of promise through mother. Verse 29, at that time the son born in the ordinary way persecuted the son born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now. But what does the scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son. For the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the slave woman, but of whom? Of the free woman. If we are children of the free woman, what should we call the woman as her children? Our mother. Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Why is it that the 66 books of the Bible repeatedly focus on mother? The reason is found on the last page of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, As for the book of Revelation, who showed it to whom? Jesus showed it to the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. God's true testimony was given to Apostle John. John saw the Spirit and the Bride speaking the words. Who is the Spirit? The Spirit is God the Father. And who is beside Him as the Bride of our Father? What were they doing? John saw them speaking. 2,000 years ago, John saw them speaking in the vision on the island of Patmos. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. John heard it clearly. He clearly heard the Spirit speaking and heard the Bride too speaking. Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take what? Take the free gift of the water of life. Only who can give us the water of life? Only God can give us the water of life. In conclusion, who are the Spirit and the Bride? They are God. God calls and gathers all human beings. So it's said that we must not add anything to the words of all this prophecy about God's calling, nor subtract from it. Verse 18, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. When we read the Bible as it's written, without adding, or subtracting from the Bible, how many gods are there? God the Father and God the Mother. There are God the Father and God the Mother. Without going through God the Mother, what is missing in us? Eternal life can never be given to us. As for the time when God the Father will give life to all human beings, when we look at the work of God's creation, Eve is to appear at the end of the creation in six days. Likewise, who should appear at the end of the creation in 6,000 years? The prophetic Eve, Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, must appear. 
That is why the wife of the Lamb, the bride, was finally made ready in the last days. Now it is time for her to appear in the last age of the Holy Spirit. God the Mother appears to give something to all human beings. What is that? In the last days, she came to give life to them according to the prophecy. According to the prophecy, when the twigs of the fig tree became tender and its leaves came out, Father came and was baptized and opened the way of the gospel. Before he sent it to heaven, just as Eve was created through Adam's ribs, Mother appeared after Father ascended. The Bible teaches us that. So we, the Church of God, absolutely believe that life can never be given to us without God the Mother. There must exist God the Mother as well as God the Father. And God the Savior must dwell in Zion where the feasts of God are celebrated. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came to the earth, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law saw Jesus Christ in person. Why did they fail to believe in Him? If we ask all human beings, can you receive Jesus if He appears again in this age? They will all say, yes, amen. However, if we say, He became flesh and appeared in human likeness again, can you believe this? They are lost for words. He will appear what time to those who are waiting for Him? When He comes a second time, does He come alone? God the Father and God the Mother appear together as a spirit and the bride and lead all their lost children to the truth and save them. Since they come in the human form like us, as it is prophesied in Isaiah chapter 8, they become a stone that causes men to stumble. How can we believe a man is God? This is what the Pharisees said 2,000 years ago. For this, Jesus Christ said very anxiously, Believe me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. This means believe me seeing what I am doing, whether or not I am preaching the new covenant, whether or not I am in Zion, and whether or not I have appeared in the last age. Seeing the work I am doing, if it is prophesied and if you believe, you will be saved. People think, if Jesus is on the earth, there will be no one who does not believe in Him. However, although Jesus was on the earth 2,000 years ago, numerous Jews did not believe in Him. They turned away from Him. But we must recognize Him. So what should we do to know God? We should press on to acknowledge Him. Today, you and I had our future guaranteed through the words of our God in the Bible, not any astrologer's book, nor any other prophet's book. And we came to know the existence of God the Mother who will guarantee our future. Please, do not lose this faith till the end, but keep it deep in your hearts so that you all receive blessings on this Sabbath day. Now I'd like to finish this sermon hoping that you received much grace from the words. Thank you very much.